In this video, we're going to cover skin changes that are seen during pregnancy. It's important to remember that most of these are normal physiological changes that occur during pregnancy due to the marked changes in sex hormones, the immune system, as well as the cardiovascular system. And this can lead to subsequent changes in the body of a pregnant lady that can then be seen in the skin. There are other specific skin conditions that are only seen in pregnancy. These are known as pregnancy-specific dermatoses, and we're going to cover a brief overview of those in this video as well. Please also remember that there are other changes that occur in pregnancy, such as in the nails and the hair, and I'll cover these in a separate video, so please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for these. So the first common skin change that we'll discuss are darkened areas that can appear on the breasts, the nipples, or the inner thighs. The dark spots and patches are caused by an increase in the body's melanin. This is a natural substance that gives color to the skin and hair. Now, there are three common variants of this darkening of the skin in pregnancy. The first is something called melasma, or the mask of pregnancy. Melasma develops in the second half of pregnancy, typically, in around 70% of women, especially those with darker skin. Melasma usually presents as a regular, sharply marginated areas of pigmentation in a symmetrical pattern, either on the forehead and temples or on the central face. And you're seeing examples of this in these photographs that are on screen now. To help prevent melasma from getting worse, you should consider wearing sunscreen as well as a wide brimmed hat every day when you're outside, as well as high SPF sunscreen. Now, most of these dark spots and melasma usually fade on their own after you give birth, but some women may have dark patches that last for years. Now, if melasma doesn't go away, you can talk with a doctor who specialises in skin problems, called a dermatologist, about potential treatment options. Now, the next common darkening of skin seen in pregnancy is something called linea nigra. The direct Latin translation to English is black line, and this is essentially exactly what it is, a dark line that runs from the navel to the pubic hair, and you can see some examples of this on screen now. This is considered a normal physiological change of pregnancy, and it may appear darker as your pregnancy develops, and it is more visible in people with darker skin. The line typically fades after pregnancy when your hormone levels return to regular levels. The fading is gradual over several weeks or months. In some cases, it doesn't entirely disappear or takes a lot longer to go away. Now, the other common darkening are seen in melanocytic nevi. Melanocytic nevi is just the medical term for moles. Now, during pregnancy, some moles show transient changes during pregnancy, and around 10% of women do report that previously existing moles become slightly larger or darker. Now, things that would be more concerning and need further investigation would be if the lady develops a new skin lesion that is irregular in shape and more than one colour. If the skin lesion looks larger than normal, or it's itching or bleeding, or if it's gradually changing shape, size or colour, then it's really important to seek attention from your doctor to be safe. So now that we've covered this darkening of the skin that occurs during pregnancy, well, the second major skin change commonly seen are stretch marks, and these affect almost eight in every 10 pregnant women, but they're not harmful. As your belly grows during pregnancy, the skin can become marked with these reddish lines, and these are called stretch marks. These marks occur when the skin stretches quickly as the baby grows, and it can affect up to 90% of women by the third trimester. The stretch marks can affect any area, but typically affect the abdomen, the buttocks, breasts or thighs. Sometimes the marks are faint, however sometimes they can be quite dark. Now, there are many products on the market that claim to prevent stretch marks, however, there's no scientific proof that any of these treatments work. Using a heavy moisturiser may help keep your skin soft, but it won't help get rid of the stretch marks. Now, most stretch marks do fade after the baby is born, but they may never disappear completely. I'm going to make a full detailed video on stretch marks in pregnancy and post that on the channel at a later date, so please stay tuned for this. Now, the third skin change which many women notice during pregnancy is acne. Some already have acne and notice that it gets worse during pregnancy. Other women who may always have had clear skin go on to develop acne whilst they're pregnant. But the key thing to remember is that acne in pregnancy isn't a special type of acne, it's just like any old regular acne. The likely culprit is excessive production of oil, also known as sebum, which happens when the body produces greater amounts of certain hormones during pregnancy. Now, for more information on acne in pregnancy, please do check out the other video on this channel, which covers the topic in much more detail, including 
what treatment options there are and how to try and prevent it. The fourth skin change commonly seen in pregnancy are changes in the glands. Sebaceous gland excretion of sebum, which is the oil, tends to increase during pregnancy due to increasing levels of maternal progesterone and androgens in the third trimester. Now, things called Montgomery glands provide lubrication to the nipples and areola for breastfeeding. They typically tend to enlarge during pregnancy and appear as papules on the areola, which is the area surrounding the nipple. The next set of skin changes are related to the vascular or the blood flow changes that occur during pregnancy. These skin changes that we're about to discuss are probably brought about due to the general increase in vascularity associated with high estrogen levels and increased blood volume. Hormonal changes and the higher amounts of blood in your body during pregnancy can cause tiny red veins, known as spider veins, to appear on your face, neck and arms. Spider veins are most common during the first half of pregnancy and the redness should fade after the baby is born. The sixth common skin change, again related to vascular changes that are normal in pregnancy, are varicose veins. The weight and pressure of your uterus can cause decreased blood flow from your lower body and that causes the veins in your legs to become swollen, sore and blue. These are called varicose veins, and varicose veins can also appear on your vulva and in your vagina and rectum. If they occur in these locations, such as the rectum, they're usually called hemorrhoids. Now, you're most likely to have varicose veins if someone else in your family has had them, but they can occur randomly. In most cases, varicose veins are a cosmetic problem that should go away after delivery. But again, if you're having any problems after delivery, please do speak to your health provider. The seventh skin change that some women comment on is the swelling of the hands and the feet. This is normally due to increased hydrostatic pressure and it can occur in up to 50% of normal pregnancies. This swelling is often worse towards the end of the day and it's important to note that swelling that comes on gradually is not usually harmful to you or your baby but it can be uncomfortable. However, a sudden increase in swelling could be a sign of preeclampsia a condition that needs to be monitored as soon as possible. And for more information on the signs and symptoms of preeclampsia, please check out the link in the description box of the video. The eighth skin change which can be seen in pregnancy is something called palma erythema. This is where the palms of the hands look more red or darker than normal, and it can affect at least 70% of women with lighter skin types and 30% of women with darker skin types. It isn't quite clear why this occurs, but it's most likely due to the increased oestrogen along with increased blood volume, causing more blood to flow to the palms. Now, there's no particular treatment for palm erythema, and it typically settles after birth. It is really important to be aware that if you develop severe itching of your palms or the soles of your feet, then you should speak to your doctor, midwife, or health provider. This is because sometimes, Itchy hands and feet, along with other symptoms during pregnancy, can be related to something called cholestasis. This is a serious pregnancy condition, and I'll cover that in slightly more detail later in this video. Now, the ninth skin change to be aware of is something called a pyogenic granuloma. These can present on the fingers, the face, the gums, or the vulvo vaginal mucosa. Now, I have made a full video on pyogenic granulomas elsewhere on this channel, so please do check that out if you've got time, because I go into much more detail around what causes this, how it's diagnosed, and potential treatment options. Now, these nine skin changes that I've mentioned here are quite general, and some of them, such as palmar erythema or pyogenic granuloma, can be found in non-pregnant people for other causes. However, there are four skin changes which are specific to pregnancy, which I'd like us to just cover briefly. The first is something called intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy. Now, to make this simple to understand, intrahepatic means within the liver, and cholestasis means a decrease in bile flow due to impaired secretion by hepatocytes. These are the cells of the liver, or obstruction of the bile flow through the intra or extrahepatic bile ducts. Now, the main symptom of cholestasis of pregnancy is an intense itching. There's typically not a rash, but most women feel itchy on the palms of their hands or the soles of their feet. But some women can also feel itchy elsewhere. The itching is often worse at night, and it may be so bothersome that you can't sleep. The itching is most common during the third trimester of pregnancy, but it can sometimes begin earlier. It may feel worse as the due date approaches. Now, once your baby arrives, the itchiness typically goes away within a few days. There's some other less common signs and symptoms of cholestasis of pregnancy, and these can include yellowing of the skin and whites of the eyes. This is known as jaundice. You can also get nausea and loss of appetite, but the last two are slightly less specific symptoms. 
If you develop this intense itching, then you must see your doctor immediately because there can be some complications that can develop in both mum and the baby. The second pregnancy-specific dermatosis is something called pemphigoid gestationis. This is a rare blistering disease of the skin and it's only seen in pregnant women. It's thought to be autoimmune mediated. Now, it can affect women of all races during pregnancy and it usually develops during the second and third trimesters of pregnancy or the immediate postpartum period after you've delivered the baby. Now, the face, the scalp, the palms and soles, as well as the mucous membranes, so the area inside of the mouth, for example, are not usually affected. After two to four weeks, large, tense blisters that are filled with a clear yellowish fluid might form. Some patients don't have blisters, but instead have plaques of inflamed skin. Now, some key things to be aware of are usually the baby is unaffected, although some can develop a similar rash, which disappears without treatment within a few weeks. Now, the rash is typically treated with a corticosteroid cream or, if it's severe, with a corticosteroid taken by mouth, such as a tablet. Now, I'm going to make a full video on this condition on the channel where I'll go into much more detail, so please do stay tuned for this. But this is just to give you a broad overview of this potential rash that can develop. Now, the third important condition to be aware of is polymorphic eruption of pregnancy. This is an itchy, bumpy rash that starts in the stretch marks of the abdomen in the last three months of pregnancy and clears with delivery. It's also called PUPPP or pruritic urticarial papules and plaques of pregnancy. This pruritic means itchy. Again, it's not very common and it occurs in around one in 160 pregnancies. It is more common in the first pregnancy than subsequent pregnancies. It's more commonly reported in people who've got white skin. The risk is greater with excessive weight gain, including multiple births, for example, twins or triplets. And polymorphic eruption of pregnancy is thought to be related due to the stretching of the skin of the abdomen. It's thought that the stretching elicits an immune response due to connective tissue damage. Now, there's nothing that essentially cures this apart from delivering the baby, but symptoms can be controlled by trying to use things like emollients, topical steroids, and for more information on PUPPP, please check out the links that I've included in the description box of this video. Now, we've finally arrived to the very final important skin condition that I'd like to briefly highlight, and this is perigo pregnancy, also known as a topic eruption of pregnancy. This is a rash that causes itchy, discolored bumps on the skin, It doesn't typically cause any complications for you or the developing baby. It can begin at any time during your pregnancy, but it typically develops in the second or third trimester, and it may continue for several months after you've given birth. Now, we've covered some common and also less common skin changes seen in pregnancy in this video, and this video is by no means exhaustive. You might want to let me know about other skin conditions that could have affected you or family or friends in the comments section below. But I do hope it's given you a broad overview of the huge variety of skin changes that can occur during pregnancy, many of which can be normal. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something new. If you did, please remember to like it, Leave me a comment if you've got any other thoughts or you'd like to share some ideas and please subscribe to the channel for weekly medical education videos if you haven't done so already. Please could I also ask that you check out the references and the resources that I've used to make this video. These are in the description box of the video and there's lots of more useful information that I couldn't cover in great detail in this short overview video that are contained within these links. Finally, I've got to stress that this has been designed as an educational video, not an individual clinical advice video. And for legal reasons, please do read the full disclaimer in the description box of the video. If you've got any concerns about skin changes during pregnancy, please see your own doctor, midwife or health provider. As ever, thank you for watching the video and until next time, bye.